what they do, y'all. You already know this your boy Frog. This one right here, this one gonna kind of hit me a little bit, man, because it, it kind of sucked, you feel me? But, um, anyways, you know, I'm gonna break it down to y'all how I ended up getting caught up at Charlotte for the last time I was at Charlotte. And everything. And then when they decided to get rid of K-Frog TV. Alright. So. I was actually about to go home. I had like less than 90 days left. And it was my first day of transition. For people who don't know what transition is. That's when you're about to go home. So they put you in a transition class. You know. So you can fill out all your release work and everything. They, they try to set you up. For, so you have your, your stuff when you need out. If you need an ID, if you need your social security card, if you need whatever you need, they, they, they try to get it all for you before you go home. So they make you do a little packet and everything before you're about to leave. You see people walking around with a red folder, then you know they're in transition. Boy, they're about to go home. So the day before transition, you know, I fought around. Ate some Xanax and shit or whatever. Got all crunk and everything. My doll Shine was in confinement. Um, I got all crunk, turned up or whatever. So I decided to go post a picture, you know. And it was a picture of me with another phone with a machete like this. And it said, nigga just trying to survive. 100 days left or whatnot. I post a, I go in the bathroom. I post a picture, you know, stuff like that. I, uh... I, I, like, had a couple other knives, too, and shit like that. Did a couple videos and stuff or whatnot. Um, I post a picture. This was, like, 2, 3 in the morning. Um, I ain't been on Instagram in forever, like, like for, for a little minute. So, I decided, I, what I did is I accepted all my friend requests on Instagram. And uh, I literally had, like, four or 500 friend requests. I accepted all of them right then and there that night. Posted the picture, yeah, you know, 100 days left, nigga just trying to survive. Next thing you know, here it is, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's time for everybody to go where they're supposed to be at. Me, I got to do my first day in transition. So I go to transition. I go to transition, it's like 8.30 in the morning. While I'm there, I get my folder, whatever, everything's going, you know, I'm filling out my stuff and everything. I'm supposed to, you know, let them know I'm going home soon. Next thing you know, the police come in there. They come in there like four or five deep or whatever. They get me. Boom. They cuff me up. First thing the officer says to me is, nigga just trying to survive, right? Nigga just trying to survive, right? And and then they start escorting me. Instead of to the box, they start escorting me back towards the dorm in handcuffs across the compound. So in my mind, I'm like, damn, nigga just trying to survive. But it like, it like, it like turned the light bulb on my head where I'm like, damn, it's all, I just posted that shit last night on a picture. So... They bring me back to my dorm or whatever. They're flipping the dorm or whatever. I was sleeping in a bunk that wasn't mine. So the, the the fat dude that I made switch with me, they got him standing there or whatever. And they're going through his stuff. But really, that's my assigned bunk. So they flip it and they see all his shit. They're going through all his stuff. So, of course, they don't find nothing. You know, they're going through his bunk. They don't even, you know. So next thing you know, they bring me, boy, and they put me, they bring me to the dorm. You know, they put me in the laundry room. I'm looking through the glass. I'm watching them flip my actual bunk that I'm assigned to. And I'm watching them flip it and everything like this. And then I'm looking over at the bunk I've been staying at or whatever. You know, see if everybody's getting rid of everything for me. You know, all my dogs that are on beat and everything. And then um, next thing you know, they walk. the police officers walk by. Like, go towards the open bay bathroom. Come back out. Big boy machete. Boom. So I'm like, damn. Right? They come in there. They're like, oh, we found one of your knives. This and that, this and that. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, fuck it, Liz, what it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, to be real, the knife they found wasn't at even my knife. You know, that was my dog's. But I I, I took the fall for it. You know, I'm not going to tell them my dog's or nothing like that. So I, I ate that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't find my knife. They found my dog's knife. You feel me? So... As I'm getting brought to confinement or whatever, uh, I'm walking across the compound. The police got me. They're two, two of them were trying to rough me up, being all dickheads and shit, pinching me and twisting my fingers all like this and, you know, being dickheads and shit. So as they're bringing me to confinement, my dog Sean yell out the window, no, nah, for all what happened? So I go to shaking my head and he's like, no, nah, what happened? And they're like, okay, for all here, got caught with a knife and a machete. You know, this and that, this and that, this and that. 
And he's like, nah. And they're like, yeah, K-Frog TV. You feel me? So they bring me to the captain's office. Before that, they bring me to the captain's office. As soon as I walk into the captain's office, there's a female officer standing there that everybody knows she's a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? She's a real flaw individual. Piece of shit, you know? She's standing there with a fucking brown paper bag over her head with a machete right here with the machete that they found standing on her side and she's standing there they walk me in I'm looking at her she's just standing still with the machete with the thing over her head as we're on our way to the captain's office I hear the the gang sergeants who picked me up the gang sergeants who came and got me the gang sergeants walkie talkie goes off the captain's like oh did you find Michael Myers and he's like, who? Who you doing? And they're like, Michael Myers, the guy with, uh, no, no. They said, they said Jason Voorhees. Did you find Jason Voorhees? He's like, who, who's that? And they're like, the guy with the machete, you know, trying to climb. He's like, oh yeah, we're on our way there now. This, this. So they brought me to the captain's office. I walk in, fucking lady standing there with the knife like this, with a brown paper bag on her head. I come in there. First thing they say is, where are the phones at? I said, I ain't got no phones. I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, then they put all the pictures out. They put the picture of me like this with the knife so it shows I have more than one phone in order to take the picture and everything. And then um, I'm like, that's photo, that's photo crop. That's what I said, like that. The female officer with the bag on her head grabs me by my shirt and like pushes me, like ran me into the glass window that was already cracked from another inmate or something inside the captain's office and puts the machete up to my neck and goes, it's called Photoshop, you illiterate motherfucker. That's what she says to me. Like that. And I'm like, damn. So I'm sitting there like that or whatever. You know, they got me a handcuff. She's got the thing up to my throat. My dorm happened to be going to lunch, to chow. So as they're going to chow, they're like, oh, Miss Miss such and so, why why are you doing that to fraud? Why are you doing that to fraud? And then she like grabbed it and like put it down and turned around and walked away from me. And they're like, Rah, fraud, my whole my whole dorm, because they, they literally gotta walk by the captain's office. My whole dorm's like, fraud, put us all as a witness on the DR, boy. We seen that frog. We seen that frog. We seen that. My whole dorm going ham. We seen that frog. We seen that. Like, you feel me? She put a, she put the machete up to my throat. You feel me? I'm like, that was photo shot, photo crop or whatever. I just made it look like I had that. You feel me? Just try to make some shit up. So like, I want to know where the phones are at. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what you're talking about. So they're like, you know what we could do? They start thinking of grimy things. They're like, you know what we could do is we could grab him and 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 staple the picture that he posted online on his shirt and bring him back to the dorm and flip the whole dorm for hours and show them this is why they're being flipped and make everybody here want to kill him. Make everyone there want his head and everything like that. But in my mind, I'm thinking like, yeah, that ain't going to happen because everybody fucks with Frog. You feel me? They know what they signed up for being in the dorm with me. So then they were like, oh, no, you know what we should do? We should put this brown paper bag on his head and walk, make him walk all the way to confinement with it on. And I'm sitting there thinking like, that ain't going to happen because I'm not going to let them put no brown paper bag on my head. You know what I'm saying? They just think of some, you know, try to, they try to discriminate you, make you, make you feel like shit. So, in my mind, I'm like, shit, I don't feel bad or nothing. So, like I said, they escorted me to, uh, they started escorting me to the confinement, well, the medical to get my pre-physical. You get a pre-physical every time before you go to the box. So, they escort me there. That's when my dog yells out the window. And they're like, oh, we got caught with a machete in the phone. Next thing you know, boom, I get put in the box. <clears throat> I'm hanging out in the box for a little while. Um... For, for like literally three weeks while I was in the box, every time my dorm would walk the chow, the officers would blare on their computer speakers, I'm a criminal, my, my song, I'm a criminal. If y'all don't know where that's at, it's on SoundCloud and it's on my page. It's called I'm a criminal. They were blaring that every time my dorm went to chow. And then when my dorm would leave the chow hall, because it's like a one-way traffic, you go in the chow hall, eat and everything, and then come out way over here and, be, and walk through the fence, be on the other side of the pound. They'd walk by the box, and they'd be like, Frog, they're playing your songs again. They're playing your songs. So they all knew of K-Frog TV. You know, they'd always call a little, 
you know, they always threw little, like, disses out there, whatever, K-Frog, K-Frog to you, like, you know, that same officer came back there to the box, like, three months later and seen me, and she's like, oh, you're still back here rotten? So she says, <laughs> but anyways, so I'm, I'm, I'm in confinement now, I'm waiting to get served my DRs, I get the DRs, and they give me, um, possession of a weapon, which was 11-inch knife, machete, and then they give me a possession of a cell phone. When really they didn't find no phone. They didn't get no phone from me. See what I'm saying? So <clears throat> the whole time I'm like, damn, you feel me? Like they hit me with a phone charge and they could have hit me with but they can hit you with uh possession of use possession of or use of a cell phone cell phone device. They gave me possession of a cell phone. And then even in my DR it says they searched and searched and searched no phones were confiscated like they didn't they didn't get none you know so i sit out i'm in the box or whatever i finally get served my drs um about five days later all my shit got sent back there to me everybody that had my st stuff and everything i had a good old hundred dollars worth of food and you know everything i was i was straight um while i'm back there in confinement i start noticing like you know left and right I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sign, I'm sending kites out there, boom, Shine eventually gets out the box, when he gets out, of, I'm sending him kites, like, hey, bro, boy, my jack's still out there on the pound, boy, want, you, you feel me, this and that, this and that, this and that, so, my whole situation, like, I couldn't get to it, you know, so I gotta send my dog to go get it, you feel me, or I gotta send word to get it sent to me, you know, so, everybody knew I was a playmaker or whatever, you know, anybody with a jack can get anything done, so, um, after a couple days being in the box or whatever, I finally got served my DRs. Um, I go to DR court. When I finally go to DR court, they give me, they only gave me, they gave me 60 for the phone, 60 for the, uh, for the, for the banger. So that's 120. In my mind, I'm thinking shit, 60. All right, it's rank current. They ran it consecutive. I'm, I'm at the hearing and I'm speaking and, um, I said to the my classification officer, I said, okay. I said, so boom, at 60? He's like, yeah. He's like, 60 and 60. And then in front of, the, you know, I was being sentenced for the DRs. He's like, oh, I'll probably send you. He's like, and he's like, I'm probably sending you to a big boy camp now. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm at Charlotte CI. Don't get much big boy than this, you know? So boom, I'm in the box or whatever, fresh 120. Which, that 120 turned into 200 and something days. But anyways, so I'm in the box. I'm back there. Everything's going as planned. Person gets caught with my jack before I get it. They come to the box. <sighs> so, I called or whatever. Like, while the phone was on the pound, after I seen it, done been about a week or whatever. Sean was still in the box. He didn't get out yet. So, I didn't really have no one I could trust to just go get it like that. You're not going to just tell anybody to go grab your jack for you. That's a jack. And you're in the box for that. They know you ain't coming back on the pound probably. Which for the longest we swore I was coming back on the pound. My dog got out of the confinement like two, three times and came back while I was still there. I was there riding. If I was going to be on that bus, I would have been been on that bus. Um, And then like I remember I was sitting back there or whatever. Person got knocked off on my phone. After about a week, you know, I still had one slid in there to me. I used and shit like that. I was like, I'm just going to get another one. So I had one slid in and I used it or whatever. I caught, uh, boom, I deactivated that one that was on the pound. The phone bill was due. So I deactivated it and this and that. Um, my dog was finna power up. He got out the box. He was finna get him one. So he got one. So I told him, I, boom, I sent him some uh, some cards that to activate the phone, like some data cards that I still had. I used to stay up, stack them up and pile them up so I'd never have to worry about it. I'd always just buy them 30 here, 30 here, 30 here. I always spend the money to buy cards so I don't have to worry about paying my bill or running out of data. So I gave my dog one of those. Next thing you know, he's out there. He's doing good. Boom. He came back to the box under investigation. When he came back to the box under investigation, I'm in the top. I'm on the top tier. His brother, which is my dog, my dog, my dog Grouch. He's on the bottom. He, he's under me. He's, he's in the, he's in the cell under me. They move him in there. Boom. They end up wanting to put some dude that was affiliated, you feel me? He was a G, he was a gangbanger. They wanted to put him in my cell 
But supposedly my dog was telling me on the vent that he told on my dog. And my dog finna get shit behind this shit too. So I play all friendly with him or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, boom. They move him, they move him in my thing. I cuff up. Boom, I let him in the cell. You know, whatever. I roll up a cigarette, spark the cigarette, pass it back to him. He's making his bed. And I'm like, oh, you know, they say you tore on ground. Da, 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 da. He's like, nah, bro, I'm telling you, I didn't, bro, I didn't. And I said, well, bro, you're going to have to tighten me up for my dog. He's like, damn, dog, for real, I already knew this. And my dog Shine just came in on an investigation. It's the first time they kept him in the same quad as me. They put his ass right across from me. And I signed him and was like, hey, bro, I'm finna bust this nigga. And he's like, for what? I said, bro, the nigga told on ground. This, this, this. And he's like, for real? So then I, Sean watched from across. He watched me get, and then I made him get on the fucking, on the, on the glass, like on the window and show Sean he was busted. I, I painted that shit, had the whole dorm screaming. All the kings were screaming, ooh, way, ooh, way. You know, shit like that. Like I, I put on for that shit. And then it was, when it was shower time that night, I busted him the first round, and then after that, he was like, I said, so I jump up on the vent. I'm like, what's up, Crouch? You good? You good? He like, it's on you, bro. He like, it's on you. I said, oh, you ain't good yet? I jump off the toilet, because you got to stand on the toilet to talk to the vent. I said, man, tie me up, nigga. He's like, he's like, no, nah, bro. He's like, man, nigga, I'm good, bro. I'm already leaking. I'm already leaking. I said, fuck, nigga, tie me up, nigga. Get, catch the door, nigga. I'm rushing you. So then he's like, man, and he tried to rush me with his head down, painted that shit again. Had him all up against the door, kicking him. The whole door shaking. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows I'm stomping that nigga in my room. And then um, my dog go to yelling off the vent now. Get off him. Get the fuck off him. All right, that's it. That's it. So I let the nigga go. I spare him. Boom. He ended up being my bunkie. My dog, my uh, my dog Shine was across there like, my dog, front line, front line. So I'm like, you already know. Later that night, we go to the shower. They escort you in handcuffs. They bring you to the shower, you and your bunkie. And um, everybody like, front line, front line, everybody. Now, come to find out, this G, his own brothers wanted him too. So when I busted him, the Gs were happy also. So I made an announcement. Hey, man, check this out, y'all boys. I said, man, I ain't bust that shit for nobody but my dog, such and such. Like, I didn't want the wrong people to get the wrong impression. You feel me? They still going to have to eat him theyself. You know, I didn't do that shit for them. I did that shit for my dog. He's supposed to be talking my dog. That's why I bust that shit. That's what I'm I'm yelling it out in the shower so the whole quad can hear me. They're like, that real now, nah, that real now. Nah. I'm like, nigga, that's, that's what it is. So then um, my dog, he came in on investigation and left. He was only there for a couple hours. You know what I'm saying? My dog got caught up on a DR behind the phone or whatever, doing a three-way and all this other crazy shit. So he got back out on the compound. Me, on the other hand, I'm still in the box, piped out riding. Now, that same G got out on the pound, and his brothers never ate him or nothing. He got out on the pound. They wanted to eat him when he was in the room with me. You know what I'm saying? But then when he got out on the pound, none of them ate him or nothing like that. Now, it's spreading around word on the pound that, oh, I beat up a gang member. You feel me? Oh, I don't like how that white boy beat my brother. This and this and this and that. What you mean? Y'all wasn't hollering that shit when he got put in my room. Y'all wanted me to bust him, and I didn't bust him for you. I busted him for my own reasons. So, anyways... I'm piped out in the box. Um, I get more than one bunkie, you know, back to back. I literally had like fucking 40 something bunkies. People come in 10 days, 15, get out there on the pound. 10 days, 15. Me, I was back there for a while though. So um, my next bunkie, he's a white boy or whatever. He comes in or whatever. But when they bring him in my room, I'm in the shower, taking a shower. And um, he could have robbed me for all my stuff because... All he had to do is not want to cuff up. And they wanted to open the door. All my shit's still in there. And when I got in there, supposedly he was yelling on the window. He was a gang member also too. He was like, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, who's sleeping in this room up here? Three top. Who's sleeping three top? And then everybody on the window was like, he like, boy, I don't know. I see some new Reeboks. I see an MP. All types of shit you're not supposed to have in the box. I had. You feel me? They're not supposed to bring you a bunkie when you're already in the shower. Because now I can't. You feel me? He could get me for all my shit. But that's stealing, though. And gang members ain't allowed to steal. They got to take that shit. So, them boys go to yelling. His own brothers are like, nah, boy, that's fraud, boy. His own brothers. His own brothers were like, boy, that's fraud, boy. You tripping, boy. Them kings going to back that bus up, boy. He going to start a war, boy. He going to start a war, boy. And then my dog downstairs, Rouse was like, boy, oh, it ain't nothing, nigga. He's like, boy, he's like, boy, you better let my dog back in now. And I didn't know none of this. I was in the shower. He's like, you better let my dog back in there, boy. Or you gonna be a plate, nigga, everywhere you go, nigga. Me and my nation gonna look for you, nigga. Nigga, I'll send word, nigga, you hit that pound, nigga. Da -da -da -da. Like, like, my dogs were finna back me, bro. Like, everyone knew it was gonna be a war, bro. You know, cause they fucked with me 1,000. So, 
Next thing you know, I come out of the shower, boom, when I go in there, whatever, he, we, I cuff, you know, I, I go in, he, he cuff up, he let me in there, boom, boom, everything's straight. But then I start hearing, I get a kite from my dog, he wrote me and told me all this shit. So like three days in, me and bro were already cool, we done, we done got the cool, and you know, I thought he was pretty straight or whatever. Three days in or whatever, I get this kite. So now I'm like, boy, I want to fade. Nigga, you tripping, boy. You going to have to run me one, boy. Like, nigga, what? Nigga, you made me see some type of way on the window, boy. All these people, dog. You going to have to tighten me up, bro. And he's like, nah, big bro. You know, I fought with you, brothers. And I said, well, bro, you going to have to tighten me up, bro. I ain't no big bro. This, this, and that. You feel me? And um, we went one round or whatever. I get, I didn't I didn't bust him bad. He didn't he didn't know how to fight work for shit either. But I gave it to him or whatever. I beat him up. And then, you know, that was my bunkie. I fucked with him. And that's who I was there with, you know for a little minute um so i'm piped out in the box or whatever i'm talking about lonely nights starving nights you know you it don't matter if you have 500 worth of canteen in there when you're in there when you're bored all you're gonna do is eat so it kept i kept running through that shit running through that shit fucking i remember uh my dogs would my dogs would hit the canteen window and sneak into confinement bro and slide me popsicles under the door Dog Shine, Shine brought me hot food, like hot sandwiches and shit. Like I was back there eating good still, and we, and you know, and everybody thought I was gonna hit the pound. You feel me? So I'm back there vibing. <sighs> Been through it all, man. Seen so many people get gassed, so many people get in the shit, people cut. You know, just been through it all, man. Done seen so much crazy shit, but was in there so long, I started seeing shit on the walls. So um, we actually had that hurricane. And uh, the hurricane that passed, I believe it was Irma. Yeah, Irma. I was in the box or whatever. All the power shut off for three days. I was in there with some little wild ass jit. That was my dog. We were vibing in that bitch. I mean, he was my bunkie for like three weeks. He hit the pound. I swore I was going to hit the pound because of how many bunkies I had. They had never shipped me. Next thing you know, they come around. And uh, they tell me, they, they my dog, one of my dog, Sean's brothers, he's like, Boy, frog is over with as I'm going to the flat to get my food. I'm like, yeah, I know boy, I'm finna hit this pound, bit this and this. And he's like, nah, boy, you on that list to get shipped tomorrow. I said, what? He like, yeah. I said, hell no. Nah. He like, bro, I wanna lie to you, bro. I wanna lie to you, bro. So I'm thinking like, man, what the fuck? So the whole time I'm back there or whatever, like I'm thinking in my mind, I'm finna hit this pound again. So is my dog, you know? So then now I'm waiting until dinner time when his dorm goes out. Because I know he going to be at that window out there. He going to be like, Frog Boy is over or whatever, this and that, this and that. You feel me? So in my mind, I'm like, boy, so when they call his dorm to go to child, I'm on the window and I'm looking. I see all of his brothers come out. So I'm like, front line. I start yelling, front line, like that. They all look. And my one dog, Nito, like, he like. So I'm like, it's over with. He's like, I said, no. He like, yeah. I said, damn, dog. And then they all turned around and went back in the dorm. So I felt like they were just going out there to tell me that. But in my mind, I'm like, man, I can't believe shit until I speak to my dog, Shine. Because I know he's going to tell me. Because he used to slide over there to laundry every week to find out if I was on the list. Like, he'd go there Mondays. Is Frog on the list? No. Hey, man, is Frog on the list? No. That was my dog. You feel me? Because we thought he was going to get shit before me. So I used to do the same shit when he was in the box and I was on the pound. So then... um. Next thing you know, here he comes. He comes out by himself. He walking and shit. I'm like, what's up, bro? He walking. He like, man, frog cut, bro, cut. I said, huh? He's like, go psych, bro, go psych. I said, what? Because going psych, I would have been able to stay at my camp. I was at a psych camp, Charlotte. They can't change you, ship you out of the out of the region. But I wasn't going to go psych and cut and all that shit. I said, man, I ain't cutting, man. He's like, damn, bro, this shit crazy, bro. You leaving them all, bro. This and this. I said, damn, dog. I said, fuck, bro. I said, for real, dog. And he was like, man, don't worry, bro. I'm going to be up there in the morning. So I'm like, all right, bro. So then, boom, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm all stressing that whole night. Like, damn, dog, they finally got me from around this shit, bro. I'm like, man, it's, and I, fuck it, bro. You feel me? Wherever I go, I'm going to just do me. So the next morning come around, and it's time for me to pack it up. They come around, Harris, pack it up. Boom. I pack all my shit or whatever. I leave. I had a banger even in the box. I left it to my bunkie. Um, I'm getting escorted up top to the, to the VP to get, which is property to get all my other property. And as I'm there, whatever I walk in, there's like, there's like 20 people sitting down in these little, in these benches, 
they're like just metal benches to sit on. There's no part to lean on. And there's like 20 people, and I'm thinking that's all people from the pound that are, that are getting shipped too also because I'm not the only one that gets shipped. Every Tuesday, people get shipped. Next thing you know, I look. There's about my, my dog and all of his brothers are there. What's up, bitch? He's like, boy, you thought I was finna miss it, bro? I told you I ain't finna... I'm like, he's like, damn, bitch, I thought we were finna hit the pound again. I said, bro, I don't. He's like, dog, I swear we're finna mom, bro. This shit buzzard, bro. And my dog looked sick, dog, like in his eyes, bro. Like we were both felt like we were never gonna see each other again, dog. Like he might get killed here, I might get killed where I'm going, bro. And we were like, that was a fucked up feeling, bro. So I said, it's all good though, bro. I said, it is what it is. I said, well, I'm going. He like, man. And then we, uh, the person told me, oh, 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 you going to Chobe, bro? You going to Chobe? Which is Okeechobee, CI, you feel me? So I'm like, all right, all right. And then my dog's like, man, that's a fucked up camp. I said, why? He's like, cuz, bro. He's like, that's a threat. They can't. He's like, what? He's like, oh, they got phone jammers. I said, damn, dog, they got phone jammers. That means that the cell phones don't work. They had just put these jammers in in between each door. So that way you can't you can't bang through or nothing. The cell phone, they're called phone jammers. Now they got them in prison. Some camps have them, some don't. So then um, next thing you know, I'm like, damn. So in my mind, I'm like, man, I got, you know, I got, I got like 160 days left till I go home. As long as I stay out of trouble, you feel me? But I'm, so I'm like, fuck it. You know, I give my dog, I give my dog my MP. Spent a thousand dollars on my MP. It costs a hundred dollars to get it, and it's eight fifty for five songs. I had like seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred songs on it. You feel me? So I left it to him, and it was engraved by the tattoo man. It said K Frog on one side, Frontline on the other side. And I and I and I left it to him. I left him some clean ass boots because I was like, man, fuck it, you know. He 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 he's still here. You feel me? I go home soon. My dog still got like a year and a half after me. You know, so I leave him that. And then it's time to get on the bus. I get on the bus or whatever. Um, as I'm walking out of the property room towards the bus, all the female officers are like, hey, fraud, isn't, isn't, isn't it? And they're all on the nigga trail. And then um, I leave from there. I, I, get, I go from there to South Florida Reception Center. Put me in the box. I'm at South Florida Reception Center box. I'm sitting there chilling um, for a whole two weeks like they left me in the box there two weeks like boom like like and the next like not this tuesday i got there tuesday i left not the next tuesday the tuesday after that only two buses go and one was charlotte and DeSoto. so i'm like boy and my dog i ran into my dog that was from charlotte he just came back from somewhere he was at medical or some shit so he he was transferring back to charlotte he's like boy you going to charlotte boy like, bitch, you're going back. So I'm thinking in my mind, there ain't no way in hell I hit like this. I got reclassified to land back at Charlotte. I'm thinking like, hell nah, boy. I, I hit that compound, bro. Everybody going to be like, they're going to think Frog of Dawn for real. DeSoto. They put me on the bus for DeSoto. When I thought I was going to Chobe. But while I was in the box in South Florida, my bunkie was there. And he had bought work release. So he was there waiting to go back to prison. And he was, and he, I mean... Well, we're already in prison, but he was waiting to go back to a, a, a main camp. So he he's telling me, bro, if you were going to Chobe, bro, you would already went, bro. If you were going to Chobe, bro, you would already went, bro. I'm thinking like, I know I ain't going to the Panhandle, dog. They finna send me way back up here to the Panhandle by Calhoun and shit, and I go home in 150 days. So they like kept me there. I was supposed to leave within that week, but then they reclassified me from Chobe to DeSoto. So then, boom, I stayed there. I get on the bus, find out I'm going to DeSoto. Uh, the whole the whole ride there, whatever, it's just different vibes. Like everybody I see that's going to DeSoto, you know, they're all like they were different. They it wasn't like the goons I'm used to riding with. I'm used to riding around, and there's people that rob the whole bus. Like let me get that, let me get that. Take that chain off your neck. Take that watch off. Let me get that. Let me get everything. You know, people that are savages that'll pee in the cooler. Like in the back of the truck, in the back of the bus, there's like a hole where you walk and you pee in. You stick your meat in there and you pee and it runs in. It's like a little, like a, looks like a urinal, you know, and next to that is a, is a water keg, you know, in case you get thirsty. I mean, you're shackled and shit like that. But man, I'm, I've been in buses where people, man, fuck all you niggas and piss in the water cooler. Like try the whole bus. Like I have some homeboys that were like savages though. You feel me? So now I'm sitting here like, damn, I got these dudes, you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking around, I'm like, 
fucking DeSoto, but I didn't heard so much about it, you know, from like a lot of people I knew on the streets. They told me DeSoto was rocking. They told me DeSoto was this, DeSoto was that. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. So I'm on my P's and Q's, you feel me? When I go here, I'm finna, you know, whatever, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? So I end up, you know, we ride over there to DeSoto. I believe it's in Arcadia, Florida. And um, we pull up. And that's when my next camp started. I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here. And I'll make that another story about when I finally touched down at DeSoto. But anyways, it's fucked up how they got me down away from Charlotte. And then in the whole process, check this out. I forgot this part. In the whole process, I tried to appeal my DR. And I tried to appeal my knife DR also. I appealed the DR. I had to write for clemency and everything to the to the state of Tallahassee, all that. I filed for my, I filed my DR because they charged me with possession of a cell phone, but never found a phone. Also, I char, I wrote that they charged me with a, with a, with a knife that they found in an open bay bathroom that has access to 120 people, maybe 90 people, however many people are in there. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that could have been anybody's knife. And, um, it was so flawed at the warden and them. They literally, they denied my appeal. I feel like one of them DRs should have dropped, you know, regardless. They just wanted to get me off their compound, and that's what they did, you know, and I ended up riding out 200-something days in the box, and then, like, once I hit, you know, South Florida, they kept me in the box, and then, you know, fucking, it's just crazy, and then they sent me to DeSoto, but I right, hope y'all like this video. Y'all hit that subscribe button if you watch stuff this far. And then I'm um, just going to continue with my story. You know, the next one, man, I touched down at, uh, you know, DeSoto. And then DeSoto was the last camp I was at. And that's the one I actually eos from, which means end of sentence. I actually ended my sentence there. And that's where I got released. All right, y'all tune in. Fuck with me, frog.